A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words which I enjoin on you today. Drill them into your children. Speak of them at home and abroad, whether you are busy or at rest. Bind them at your wrists as a sign, and let them be as a pendant on your forehead. Write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land which he swore to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he would give you a land with fine, large cities that you did not build, with houses full of goods of all sorts that you did not garner, with cisterns that you did not dig, with vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And when, therefore, you eat your fill, take care not to forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. The Lord your God shall you fear, him shall you serve, and by his name shall you swear. The word of the Lord. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. The Lord live, and blessed be my rock, extolled be God my Savior, you who gave great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed to David and his posterity forever. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The man came up to Jesus, knelt down before him, and said, Lord, have pity on my son, who is a lunatic and suffers severely. Often he falls into fire and often into water. I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Jesus said in reply, O faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long will I endure you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked him, and the demon came out. And from that hour, the boy was cured. Then the disciples approached Jesus in private and said, Why could we not drive it out? He said to them, because of your little faith. Amen, I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move forward from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. The Gospel of the Lord. 
church. Our readings today invite us to an uncomfortable and an unpleasant reflection. Uh, namely that we don't do well with things that are safe, that are predictable, that are comfortable. For some reason, the, the human person has a much more difficult time being a good steward of blessing than we do being a steward of suffering. And when you get to the first reading today, God is telling the people of Israel, listen, I'm going to take you into a land and you are going to find yourself possessing all kinds of things that you, in fact, did not labor for. Homes and vineyards and cisterns and a whole host of things. And he gives them a warning. After you have possessed all these things, once you have acquired all these things, take care not to forget the Lord. Take care not to forget the Lord. And what does Israel do? They forgot the Lord. Um, and time and time again, they are blessed and forget. Blessed and forget. So you come to the New Testament, and it's almost like God is looking at the pattern of Israel, and he is setting up this pattern for us to reflect on. That Comfort and prosperity is not, in fact, that which we should seek most. But what we should seek is faithfulness in pursuing God. And, and we find that in the New Testament, they are, the apostles and all the followers, are inspired to sacrifice and inspired to giving up all that they have for the poor, giving up all that they have for the sake of the kingdom. And the challenge is, is that this takes faith. It takes faith. So Jesus encounters the demoniac today, casts out the demon. The disciples ask him, why could we not do it? And he says, because of your little faith. In fact, when he says, uh, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? He's not talking to the father. He's not talking to the son. He's looking around at the 12 and almost you could sense this exasperation, like, Heavenly Father, what have you given me to work with? I'm, I think this is more than I can handle. But because of their little faith, and it takes time for the apostles to enter in more fully to what it means to have the joy of the gospel, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the loss of material things. So this takes us to our feast day today, Pope Sixtus. So this is Pope Sixtus the second. And if I were to quiz you and say, what do you know about Pope Sixtus? You might not know anything. Um, but you do hear of him on somewhat of a regular basis, depending on what liturgy you... Uh, when we get to the Roman canon, we get a long list of fantastic saints. And have you ever wondered, who are these people, and why are they there, and what is their story? So we hear after the apostles of Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus. Today's feast day is that Sixtus. It's this guy. It's Sixtus, Sixtus the second. There was a Sixtus the first, also a martyr, also amazing, but the one in our Roman canon is Sixtus the second. Ordained in 257, died, martyred, 258. It was a short but bright and powerful pontificate for the good pope. He enters into the midst of the controversies of the day, which was the baptism of heretics. Do they need to be rebaptized? The church 
seated in Rome had always said, no, if they have been validly baptized, don't rebaptize them. So in Africa and the Asiatics, they were saying, no, we got to rebaptize them because they forfeited their salvation. They're like, no, one baptism, once for all, one Lord, faith, baptism. So Pope Sixtus enters into that. And it says of him in particular, he was more charitable than Pope Stephen, who preceded him, who tended to rule with a bit more of an iron fist to those other churches who were not obeying. But Pope Sixtus came in with more conciliatory and pastoral tones while still holding to the fullness of the faith and defending that. So it's in this time that Pope Valerian puts out a new order for persecution. Let's dispense with interrogations and inquiring and all these things of these Christians. Just if you find a pope or a bishop or a deacon, just capture them and kill them. That's it. If they are carry that title, that's enough for them to exit this life. So with this danger now present, Pope Sixtus removes his congregation to one of the catacombs where they figure maybe we'll be more safe down here. They weren't. They were found out. And in the middle of Mass, he is taken and executed. Some debated whether he was executed on the spot or, or elsewhere. But, but this illustrates the fundamental difference of this new covenant who would sign up for this? Say yes to Jesus and lose your life. It's just, it's not a good marketing plan. It's, it's just a bad way to start anything. But person after person, woman after woman, in myriads and hundreds and thousands responded to the gospel because that is what drew them. It's not for personal gain. It's not for the cisterns and the vineyards and the houses that we did not build. It is for the eternal home in heaven that we labor for. And it, I love what it says in uh, Revelation. We had the reading a couple days in the Liturgy of the Hours. They did not love life so much that they despaired of death. Would that that, that be our response today? May we not love life so much and the things of this world so much that we would despair in part of physical death, but also that death to the things of this world. Those things that attach us, those things that put us in a place of comfort, the things that God warns Israel. Don't let these comfortable things make you forget So when the Lord brings us discomfort, those are his gifts to us to help us remember the Lord, to remember our heavenly home, and to not hold too tightly to the things of this world so that we might fully embrace the things of the next world. So today is we get to the Eucharistic liturgy and we pray the Roman canon, Eucharistic prayer one, and we go through these great saints of old. May, may we have a new appreciation of why Pope St. Sixtus, with his entire year of papacy, has made it into our Eucharistic prayers for his bold profession of faith and being willing to give it with his life. Amen.